Darkinian was the favorite, the ultimate hard charger. He was on a dominant run through the lowest weight divisions in the sport. They were fighting that night at 112 pounds. And throughout the early rounds, Darchinian was going after Donaire, muscling him, trying to rough him up, and Donaire landed a few left hooks here and there. And then in round five, a perfect counter left hook shot by Nonito Donaire, and that launched his run onto a place very close to the top of the pound for pound list. Ultimately, they brought a stretcher into the ring. To Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Promotion. The action continues. Sponsored by Tecate Con Character, along with Pacquiao versus Rios. Saturday, November 23rd, live on HBO Pay Per View. The three judges at ringside scoring will be Levi Martinez, Oren Schellenberger, and Nelson Vasquez. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, referee Lawrence Cole. And now, the rematch, the grudge match that boxing fans around the world have been waiting for. 10 rounds of boxing in the featherweight division. Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red and black, official weight 125, three quarter pounds. As a professional, 39 victories, including 28 knockouts, five defeats with one draw, Born in Armenia, now fighting and training out of Sydney, Australia, the five-time world champion, former two-time bantamweight, two-time super flyweight, and former flyweight world champion, Vic the Raging Bull Darchinian. <laughs> and fighting out of the red corner, wearing red with gold, Officially weighing in at 125 and one quarter pounds. As a professional, 31 victories, including 20 knockouts. Only two defeats from Taliban Bohol, Philippines. The four-time world champion, former flyweight, super flyweight, bantamweight, and super bantamweight champion of the world, the Filipino Flash, Nonito Don. I want you to obey my commands, protect yourself at all times, understood? Let's touch him up, good luck. On paper, Darchinian's made for Donaire, as we saw in their first fight. But Darchinian's a tough, wily, highly motivated old veteran who's a fighter to his bones. Whereas Donaire admits that his passion for boxing is still not 100% of what it once back, was. Darchinian right. wants to find out right here Box. if Donaire still wants to be a fighter. We just showed you a feature video in which Donaire was saying, yes, I have the fire back. When we met with him privately yesterday, he confessed and said, well, I'm getting the fire back. I'm not really sure that I have it all back. Part of it was to bring his father back into his camp. Six years ago, when he knocked out Darchinian, his father was his trainer. Since that time, he spent much of the time with Robert Garcia, and Garcia is now the head man, but Garcia graciously allowed him to bring his father back into the camp. He says that his father is doing a lot of the pad work with him, and the familiarity of doing pad work with his father, who brought him up years ago, is, he says, helping to rejuvenate some of the old five. Steve Weisfeld, tell us about the referee, Lawrence Cole. We last saw Lawrence Cole referee Crawford in Sanabria. I liked his stoppage in that fight, and he also did a nice job in Alvarez Trout. It's interesting, Jim, if the boxers are in a clinch, Sometimes you'll see Lawrence physically work their hands free as opposed to the more traditional break. Not all referees use that method, but it's worked for Lawrence in the past. 
You know, sometimes it's good when a referee lets guys fight post. It's good for a guy that can fight post for him to just knock your hands down. But for guys who don't like that contact in close, it's not good for the ref to just knock their hands down. They want the ref to break it up so they can get away. That's why I like that Cole does it, because that guy's trying not to engage, and the point is to have a fight. That's right. Dick Darchinian just a little bit more cautious in the early going this evening than I'm accustomed to seeing him. Well, like you said, he didn't know who Donnell was the first time he fought him. And when he says that, he doesn't mean that personally he didn't know who he was. He didn't know how good of a fighter he was facing the first time. That's what he meant when he says, I didn't know who I was in the ring with. Uh, now he knows he's definitely sure who he's in the ring with, and he knows that he has to be very cautious with the guy in front of him this time. The fact that Darchinian's lost a bunch of fights since then, that's mostly a function of the fact that he went up in weight and fought all the best fighters in the world, one after another. And he won some and he lost some, which is usually what happens. Yeah, and, and, and some of the matchups, like Anselmo Marino, or like the uh, uh, Japanese fighter that he fought in Japan, Yamanaka, those are boxers against whom he was up against it to begin with. Sure. Just tough matches for him. And four fights out of 45, or five out of 45 out of good, ain't bad. Hard left hand by Darchinian. And air fires a right hand back on his own. Darchinian had real success at the end of that round. Indeed he did. Stay nice and patient like that, okay? Stay smart and patient. Beautiful. He's trying to throw that right hand, okay? So you catch it with that left hook, okay? Be smart, okay? Be smart. You see that right hand coming, okay? See it coming. When you cut it to the corner, I don't want a big step to you fight. It's too early. You know, just keep moving a little bit. You just move. Okay, don't wait until you can the punches. Don't wait. Such side. Okay, okay. Such side. Such side. Give me the angle. Okay? Step in, step out. Pain with the shoulders. Pain with the arms. Okay? Don't, don't show him what's coming. He see Garcini land a good overhand left, but he stayed low as he threw his overhand left. And it allowed him to miss getting caught with the left hook counter from Donaire. Tommy Bot's numbers in the first round. Neither fight was very active. Donaire was 9 of 22. Darchinian 5 of 21. Darchinian warmed up in the last minute of the round, landing four of those five shots in that last minute. Darchinian backed Donaire to the ropes before he landed that left hand with another left hand that missed but had such velocity and force that Donaire backed up and looked a little wide-eyed. Very good tactical fight going on right now. It's a war of nerves in there. Yeah, both guys are trying to faint the other guy out of position or faint enough so that he cannot tell when, he's, when the other guy's about to attack. This is not just because they both have power, which they do. It's that there's a lot at stake for each guy. They don't want to be the first one to make the major mistake. Body shot by Nonair. Plus, as hard as both of these guys punch, one mistake could cost you to fight. Kinian having a lot of success with that left hand. Sometimes in a rematch, you see guys go right at it because they know each other pretty well. Here, six years have passed, so they're relearning each other. And they are 14 pounds higher up in weight than was the case when first they met. Donaire, as the years went by, became more and more of a, a puncher and less of a boxer. He just hurt Garcinio. Just hurt Garcinio pretty bad. With the left hook. Yes, hurt him real bad. You see Donaire wanting to get back to the boxing to set up the power punches. That's fascinating, Roy, and it speaks to Donaire's heavy hands. It didn't even look like that big a shot. It but didn't look no like... no question, Garcinian was hurt. Yeah, he's a very precise puncher, Jim. He throws his punches right on time. He has good extension on all of his punches. Oh! Hard right hand by Donaire. Darchinian up. We got 44 seconds oh, to go in the round. Darchinian gonna fight his way out of it. Two hard left hands momentarily wobbling Donaire. 
Both fighters have been hurt in the second round. And D'Artagnan but not jumped in with that left hand again on the same thing what happened that happened before. Donaire is easier to hit early in this fight than he's been in a long time. Rigando is a different story. He's a very precise counterpuncher and ran Donaire into a lot of shots. But here, Donaire's just getting hit clean by a guy throwing big left hands. Southpaw against a conventional fighter, and Darkinian lands another one of those whipping left hands. <laughs> on the outside, but just like you did. That's how you hurt him. You fucking landed a straight right or right hook. Go, big. Okay? I don't want him to get you with that right hand again. That's the only thing he touched you with, and it's nothing, okay? You shook it up. When you catch you with a punch, don't get desperate and jump on it. Stay focused and patient. Beautiful. Easy, Donnell. Donnell Landis. One, two combination, a beautiful straight right hand to the jaw that really hurt Victor Artinia, but right off of it, and Vic missed him with the right hook on that one, and right off of it, Vic landed that same overhand left and stayed low, which allowed him to slip Donaire's left hook. Combi box numbers in two, Donaire 11 of 32, Darchinian six out of 26. Pattern is emerging. Donaire seems to control the first two minutes of the round. Darchinian comes back in the last minute of the round, kind of rally back into it. They were exchanging and just missing left hands. Donaire's left hook off the front foot, of course, and Darchinian's straight left hand, and they were throwing them with knockout intentions at the end of the round. Donaire's reflexes look a half step slow to me, Roy. His you know, hands are still fast, but yeah. he's getting tagged cleanly. Yeah, well, you got to. That's not an attribute to his reflexes. I think you got to attribute that to Darchinian's quick hands. Darchinian has very quick hands, and that's what makes him so powerful because speed is power. Not to mention that he is a strong physical guy because he does. They say he used to do something like a thousand push-ups. Two thousand push-ups per exactly. day. So he's physically a strong guy, but the speed on the power on the punches is what makes him so dangerous. So that makes another guy's reflexes often look a little slower. Recently, I've read that the push-up is an overrated exercise, but if you do two thousand a day. I don't see how it could be overrated. <laughs> you got to be getting something out of that. Of course. Why do you think he got so many knockouts? He's also a very experienced fighter. He doesn't look like a great boxer, but he has a way of avoiding punches and getting his punches home, Darchinian. And he's been waiting six years for this. Body shot by Darchinian. Donair missing with the right hand upstairs. And Darchinian is showing some unusual patience here because it's not like him. To left wait hand like by this. Darchinian. Straight up the pipe. Donair having trouble getting away from Darchinian's straight left hand. Left hook lands for Donair. Darchinian so conscious of, the, of Donair's left hook that he hasn't really followed his advantages and run into anything. No, he hasn't. But the problem with that is he's looking for the left hook and he ended up getting hurt with the right hand already tonight. Can't jump in like that. Her left what, hook lands again for Donaire. Yeah, that's what got him knocked out Time. the first fight. December 4, tune in for the premiere of State of Play, an innovative new documentary series from acclaimed filmmaker Peter Berg. The first episode, Trophy Kids, shines a light on a growing number of parents who are obsessed with the results of their children's athletic competition. 
Vic. Beautiful rounds, okay? When you throw the punch, and then you come back to your defense, it's perfect, okay? He's trying to counter you, all right? He's still trying to counter you. Let's add some face in here now. And I want you to move that head, Vic. When you move that head, he doesn't know what punch to throw. And he can't time you with anything when you're doing that, okay? I need you. And, and, and your left, and to his right, all right? Double jab and right hook. Don't, it's got to be don't, quick. Don't stand up in front of his punches, okay? Get your beast on. Okay? Don't pick your body up. Rachel Donair, wife of, seated at ringside with their son, Jarrell. Jarrell was born earlier this year. And the name, J-A-R-E-L, is an acronym for uh, Junior and Rachel's Everlasting Love. Nonito with his father back in his corner. Steve Weisfeld, how do you have it through three? Jim, I have it 30 to 27 for Donaire. While Darchinian landed some hard shots, Donaire edged Darchinian every round by being busier. One more comment on the first fight. On the official scorecards, Andre needed the last four rounds to win the fight, and that's what he got. Well, thank you for that, Steve. And again, the scorecard which had Martirosian as the winner was unfortunate. And it's good that Andrade got proper scoring from the other two judges. To win a 154-pound title, though, Darchinian lands a hard left hand again. And while we feel strongly about the competence of our unofficial ringside scorer, Steve Weisfeld, I don't think that those first three rounds were necessarily easy to score. And I could certainly imagine one or two of them being scored for Dar Darchinian by some of the judges. For sure, but Steve is one of the very best judges in the world, and he's sitting here actually scoring the rounds. I won't contradict them. I thought maybe Darchinian won a couple of those rounds. But it's very possible that with Nonito coming in the heavy favorite every time Darchinian lands something, it makes a bigger impact on the mind of, of a viewer because it's, it's less expected. Well, Steve said that he scored the rounds for Donaire because he was more active. Yeah, he's more active, but not by a wide margin. Neither guy is exactly, you know, bringing down the house with activity in there. There's a lot of waiting and looking, and there's another hard left hand that lands for Vic Darchinian. And we don't have to really worry about the scoring anyway, because Darchinian is panning on trying to knock Donaire out. So somebody going out, it won't be no 12-round fight. So I don't even think we got to be concerned about those scorecards. Donaire, Donaire so far is fighting like a guy who's had his confidence rattled to me, Roy. Um, when Darchinian started landing, it, it, there's a sense that Donaire is thinking, oh, it's all going south. Um, and, and making it a bigger deal in his mind than he has when he's gotten hit in other fights. Uh, I wouldn't say that. I'll just say that it's just the respect of knowing how hard a guy like Darchini can punch. Now Donaire seems to relax a little bit, but he missed with the one two. Now there he it is. There the it is. That hook that hurt him right there. There All it is. There it is. Right Darchinian's there. trying to fight right back. The fight breaks up. <laughs> Those were some enormous shots they traded at the end of that round. <laughs> Julio Cesar Chavez seated at ringside calling for Mexican television and enjoying the little flurry at the end of round four. Please. They're Good. going crazy over there. They're Good. going crazy. Good. Listen, please, please. He's getting out of focus. Don't let him get on your nerves and don't jump in on him, okay? A little exactly. bit tighter when you go inside to fight with him. Okay, bring him into a fight. Please, please, Be smart, you're beating him with boxing. Keep moving that head for me. Keep moving that head and boxing for me, huh? Okay? I'm going to do that. Just keep people over here, you know? I told you, just keep throwing the head, just keep throwing that leg. That's the only punch he's got. He said, don't ever come catch Darchini with a hook high on the head. Had it been a little bit lower, it would have been much more devastating. But then Darchini fires back with his own left, and don't ever count with a hook. And they just did some perfect exchanging at the end of that round, but nothing serious really landed in a good spot. CompuBox found both fighters landing only seven punches in the fourth <laughs> run. Donaire seven out of 31, Darchinian seven out of 38. And we moved to round number five. Note that it's scheduled only for 10. Neither fighter has a title coming in. 
There was some chaos in, in uh, Donaire's corner. His father was talking over Robert Garcia and giving him, he was getting this team two separate sets of instructions. And I wonder how long that's going to last. Well, trust me, if it's Donaire that I know, he's going to listen to his father first because his father was with him when he beat Darchin in the first half. But his father has not been with him for the past few years during which Donaire was rising to number three on the pound for pound list. Don't mean that his father built that house, not Robert Garcia. 100% correct. <laughs> not that Robert Garcia is not good, but his confidence is going to be in who's going to get the longest. This is HBO's Boxing After Dark. We're in Corpus Christi, Texas. Jim Lampley along with Max Kellerman and Roy Jones. Three fights on the card this evening, and the first one already completed. Demetrius Andrade got a split decision victory over Vanis Martirosian to pick up a vacant 154-pound title belt. Now Vic Darchinian and Nonito Donaire are fighting a rematch of the fight that took place six years ago in Bridgeport, Connecticut, where Donaire won with what was seen then as a shocking fifth-round left hook knockout. I think Darchinian is an underrated fighter, and he has been for several years. That said, this looks like a more vulnerable Donaire to me than we've seen in the last several years, meaning four or five years or more. But I expected Darchinian to try to mount a higher rate of activity, try to expose Donaire uh, at this point in his career as somebody who might not have all of his capacities, might not be as committed as he used to be. And Darchinian instead is waiting and waiting and trying to land one big shot. Because Darchinian learned the first fight that you go out there and go at Donaire and leave yourself open while you're at him, you'll find yourself on a stretch of leaving the arena. So he's not stupid. He learned from his first fight. More than anything, Donaire is a puncher. That's exactly right. Like that right there. If you run in there on one of those shots, you're going to have problems. Body shot with the left hand by Darchinian. And both, are, both of our experts right on point in exposing why I was wrong to expect Darchinian to go in here and try to flood him with activity. <laughs> in a moment, we'll show you the two fighters who are coming up in the main event. And Darchinian knocks Donaire back into the ropes with a left hand. That punch clearly hurt Nanito as well. Rocky Martinez warming up in his dressing room. He holds a 130-pound title belt, and he'll be defending it tonight against a fighter who's moving up to 130 pounds for the first time in his career, Mikey Garcia. Earlier this year, failed to make weight when he was trying to defend the 126-pound championship against Juan Manuel Lopez in Dallas. They went ahead with the fight. Garcia knocked Lopez out in four rounds but had to give up the belt, move up in weight, and he fights for a 130-pound title in his first trip to the weight level tonight. He see Darchini again, catch Donnell trying to counter the left hand with his hook, and the overhand left is landing first, and Darchini is staying low and slipping the counter left hook. He's been doing that all night long. Donnell has to either step out and counter that left with a right hand or do something Stay back. different. I want you to slide back. You saw Donaire drop the right hand Perfect. as Darchinian was delivering the left. Donaire with a, or Darchinian, I should say, with a 9-5 to five edge in the fifth round in landed punches. That's the first time in the fight that Darchinian has landed more than Donaire. It's still a war of nerves a lot of the time in there. Donaire has something to overcome here. He's faced with a guy who's not afraid. He, he's he's wary of the things he should be wary about Darchinian, but he's not scared of Donaire. And he is asking of Donaire, do you still want to be a fighter? And I think that's why Donaire took a fight of this magnitude, because he knew that this fight would push him and make him find out if he really wanted to be a fighter. Because to beat Darchinian, he's going to have to dig in, go to the bottom of the pits, and figure out how to pull a victory out. Frankly, if you were to look at everything that boxing writers have written, Coming into this evening, the vast majority of boxing writers who wrote about the fight started with the presumption that Darchinian's made the order for Donaire, that this was a choice that was made so that Donaire can get another spectacular knockout and go forward in his career, erasing the disappointment of the Rigondeaux loss. So far in the fight, 
it isn't turning out exactly that way. Well, that still could happen, but you knew even if that does happen, you knew it was going to be a tough task until, if it happens, it happens. It's the kind of fight where if Donaire can get past it and win it, it will be very good for him. That's what I was trying but to say. But the difficulty of getting past it is precisely why it'll be good for him. Sixth round of a scheduled 10. First time that Donaire and Darchinian have been in the sixth round together because the preceding fight ended in the fifth. Archinian does not show up to lose. And a matter of fact, he don't he don't show up to win by decision. He shows up to knock you out. <laughs> to be quite frankly. Especially against Nonito, who he's been waiting <laughs> half a dozen years to avenge that defeat. Lengthy left hand touched Donaire for Darchinian. Not full impact. I've seen Donaire cautious yeah, you gotta against be Jeffrey Matabula, for instance, but I've never seen him this cautious. Well, you've never seen him fight a guy with this much speed on his punches as, as uh, Darchini has either. Or coming off a loss where he's been undressed. Oh, good shot. Yeah, right right hand shot by Donaire. Tremendous exchange right there. This is where it's dangerous for Darchini right here. When he wants to just run in without thinking, he's susceptible to get caught with a counter punch coming straight in. Punches. They don't have to be power punches, but you gotta throw more. You gotta throw more and step to the side. Step you step promised step. us you're gonna do it, okay? You're you doing have four great. rounds in front of you. Just stay focused, easy. He's flying down too. Just stay focused, okay? Breath, All right, Vic? You got this. Let's go. You're doing it. Smart. You're doing what you're doing, man. You're the best here. Zombie <laughs> box numbers through the sixth round show that both Donaire and Darchinian have connected on exactly the same number of power punches. A small number, but nevertheless, they're equal at 35 power shots apiece so far in the fight. Steve Weisfeld, how do you have it through six? Uh, Jim, I have it even. A big rise in Darchinian's confidence level the last three rounds. In round six, Donaire landed one big shot, but in general, Darchinian was coming forward, pressing the action. So after six rounds, I have it. 57-57. Steve, I still don't think it's an easy fight to score. Would you agree with that? I definitely agree, especially as you said, uh, the first three rounds and the sixth round was close too. I thought Darchinian definitely won rounds four and five though. I also think it's an even fight and I've given different rounds to the two different fighters. So it, I think that demonstrates it's a difficult fight to score. And it demonstrates that this is a good fight. I'd like to see him throw more punches, but of course, Donaire's father also would like to see his fighter throw more punches. You heard him saying to Nonito between rounds, you need to throw more. They don't have to be power shots, but throw more punches. Then step aside. You mentioned the Matabula fight, Jim. Before the Rigondeaux fight, Donaire hardly lost rounds. Matabula was the exception. He actually won some rounds from Donaire. Good left hook by Donaire. Here yep. he's getting hit cleanly and losing some rounds to a guy he won every round from and knocked out six years ago. This is not the same Donaire. I think he's beginning to find a combination that he likes, though, Roy. He seems to keep coming back now to the straight right hand followed by the left hook. That's the way to do it for him. The right hand is the key, then the left hook, because just to lead left hook ain't getting it done.
was a thunderous tackle by Vic Dartinian. <laughs> the raging bull. He can play strong safety for your high school teams. Donaire is talking about getting back to his boxing more, but he's completely flat-footed here. Not very active, not really pumping out a jab. Looking to load up and catch Darchinian running in with one power shot. Apparently shaken up whenever Darchinian touches him. He's a, a fighter experiencing something new in his career, Donaire. Coming off a loss with a new young family. Looking for the, the passion that he had not long ago. Vic, Vic, how many hashtags are this? Mickey Chat is bots. Boom! Okay? Mickey Chabak feet, arrow down under the shot. Okay? Head movement, shot. Okay? Do not swing. Okay? Abak for Mickey stay more busy. You have to throw two, three punch combinations more often, not just once the home round. More often. Okay? And you have to do it. Three rounds only do That's all we got. Right. Box numbers in the seventh round. Donaire was five out of 21. Only threw 21 punches in the seventh round. Darchinian, five out of 35. Each of them landing only four power shots. They've been very sparing in their punch output throughout the fight. By the way, we've gotten all the way into the fight this far without mentioning Darchinian's new trainer, Edmund Tarverdian. Tarverdian is an MMA trainer as well as a boxing trainer working with... Darchinian for only a relatively short time. He's more well known as the trainer of MMA female star Ronda Rousey, whom you may have seen profiled on HBO's Real Sports last year. Yeah, and maybe that's where he learned how to take Donnell down from because he has an MMA trainer now. So that was a pretty good body slam, so who knows? He didn't leg with him once he got him there. <laughs> Now Donaire back up on his toes. You know, in a 10-round fight with a lot of rounds close to score, this has a kind of drawish feel. One of these guys might want to take control here. Well, Dorchenian has to be careful with his attack because, like I said before, for him, it's dangerous when he's on the attack because that's how he got knocked out the first time. In the preceding between-round period, it was Donaire's father who asked him to throw more punches. This time around, it was Robert Garcia who pleaded with him to throw more punches. He's just trying to see who can get him to listen. Donaire was always dressed up as a boxer, a, a puncher dressed up as a boxer a bit because he would bounce on his toes and he did have fast hands. It was never so much about his boxing skills as it was about his athleticism and punching power. But he did have some skills. He was able to win most of the rounds boxing guys. He has skills and he has power in both hands. That's what made him so devastating and such a good uh, item to watch. And Darchinia is the same here. He has different, a different type of skills, but he still has power in both hands, mainly his left hand. Donaire, when he trains with Robert Garcia, trains in Oxnard, California, in the same camp with Brandon Rios. Rios hasn't yet taken off to go to Macau for his upcoming fight with Manny Pacquiao. So we'll have the privilege of talking to him live after this fight is over and before the main event between Mikey Garcia and Rocky Martinez. Saw from Golovkin a couple weeks ago, Gennady Golovkin. He's a tremendous puncher too, but he doesn't, he's not a lazy guy. He, he doesn't fall in love with his punch to the extent that he stops working. He's constantly trying to open up the other fighter to get those big shots home and Donaire Seems like a fighter who's fallen in love with his power and gotten a little lazy. That's Donaire's criticism of Donaire. He himself says, I fell too much in love with my left hook. There's a left hook. Trying to end the fight with one punch. The way he did against Garchinian six years ago. The way he did against Fernando Montiel. Immediately after boxing tonight, stay tuned for the premiere of 24-7 Pacquiao Rios. Check out the guys with Yao Ming on HBO's Instagram page. 
as we follow both fighters as they prepare to meet live on pay-per-view November 23 from Macau, China. Wind up a shot on you, okay? I'm trying to walk you down to catch you with a big shot. Stay smart, okay? Stay low for me. You don't Keep need boxing. that one, no. Whatever you're doing is great. Do not fall on him. Do not lean, okay? All right? Head movement, same thing. Body, head, keep mixing up. Very beautiful. Okay, you have two rounds, right? It's perfect, but you got to do it more. More after. You're waiting too long. Don't blow this. Don't give this away. You have to pick it up. This next two rounds. Go inside. Let's go. Inside, throw combination. Chin down. Chin down, and let's go. Two rounds there. Back, 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 back. Get on back. Come on, you. There we go, good. Come on. I'm going to give you three minutes. That Golovkin fight, as it was a couple weeks ago, it was obviously last week. It was indeed seven nights ago. And in case you missed the graphic, Steve Weisfeld unofficially has it even now through eight rounds, 76 apiece. You heard Robert Garcia between rounds saying to Donaire, don't give this away. You've got to get more active in the last two rounds. You no, know, Jim, it's tough coming back to back for a guy like Donaire to fight a southpaw, too, because a southpaw fighting a right hand is a hander is the hardest dude to fight because of the style. Good luck took by Donaire. That one hurt Dartinian. See if Donito can find a way to follow up. Just missed with another left hook. Slightly short. Straight right hand. Followed by the left hook again. Oh, good uppercut by the old age. That one goes to Jimmy. Set up by the combination earlier in the round. And it looks like that straight right hand left hook combination yes. is going to bail Donaire out. The same left hook. Garchinian never got his legs back. Nope, and he's not probably going to get him back. But he was still throwing bombs at Donaire. Straight right hand again. Here comes the left hook. Straight right hand, left hook. He's done. Garchinian trying to find his legs. He has no legs. Doesn't he have stop him. him. Backs he into stop the ropes. He needs to stop it because he's done. Donaire's going to set up another left hook. Oh, it's a thunderous it. right hook. And a left hook. And an uppercut. And Lawrence Cole's going to stop the fight. Donaire needed to come up with something big there, not just to ensure himself a victory in a close competitive fight, but to make a statement to maybe exercise the demons of the Rigondeaux fight. He came up with it. Finally made it look as though he's Nonito Donaire. It took most of nine rounds. Or the left took to show up the way he wanted it to. <laughs> and Roy, I think it was finding that combination, the way the right would set up the left hand, that ultimately got it done for him. And that's why they wanted him to stick punches out, because if he just threw punches, they, know, they knew that the left hook would follow the right hand sooner or later. Just a matter of timing and catching Garcini at the right time with the left hook. So Donaire gets it done and gets a ninth round TKO. Bounces back from the Rigondeau loss, but not without some rocky moments and some uncertainty through the first eight rounds. And I told you that this fight wouldn't have to evolve, involve judges. I told you that it wouldn't, we would not need a judge to determine the outcome of this fight. You had that, Roy. Now let's take a look at the replay and you take us through it, Roy, Roy Jones. Here, Donnell, he got caught with a left uppercut and a right hook, but he kept on the attack. He sticks the left hook right over the jab, and that's why Dorchini didn't want to throw the jab too much because it left him open for the, the left hook. That's the most dangerous punch that Donaire throws. And now here comes Lawrence Cole's stoppage. Yeah, he threw a left uppercut right here, a beautiful uppercut. Changed, he threw that overhand left to set him up. Now he changed it to an uppercut instead of overhand left, and Dorchini was not ready for that punch. But at that time, Dorchini was out on his feet already to me. Once again, you see him come with his left hand, over the top to make him think he's aiming at the head. Then he fools him and comes under with it. Right on the chin, one more time for good measures, and the fight is over. And now let's go to Michael Buffer for the particulars on the TKO. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the referee calls a halt to the contest at two minutes and six seconds of round number nine. The winner by TKO victory. The Flash is back. The Filipino Flash Nonito Donayed. Final CompuBox numbers. They finally woke up in the ninth round after a fairly slow pace through the first eight. Donaire winds up landing 28 more, throwing 24 less and landing at a significantly higher percentage. Power shots. Donaire lands 10 more, throws 45 fewer, and lands over 50% of his power punches. He was very sparing in his output. At the moment when the fight was stopped, the, the, the judges had Darchinian leading on all, well, on two scorecards. Darchinian was leading 78-74, 78-74, and the other scorecard was even at 76, so Donaire needed the knockout and got it to rescue victory against Vic Darchinian. Now let's go to Max Kellerman, who is in the ring with Nonito Donaire. Nonito, congratulations on a spectacular knockout win. You were losing the fight on the judges' cards. That's not the Donaire we're used to seeing. What happened tonight? You know, I was trying to, uh, well, first and foremost, I want to thank the guys, uh, everybody here in Corpus Christi, and prayers to the people in the Philippines uh, who was hit by the typhoon. So please, have your prayers for the people in the Philippines, and thank you guys. Um, you know, I, I tried to work on a different style, which is going back, and the funny thing is, it was hard for me to go back. I wanted to fight, and they kept telling me to box, box, and be smart, but, you know, part of my body still memorized the fighting style, which worked in the end anyway. How much of it was psychological and emotional coming off your first loss in forever, new young family, do you still want to be a fighter, faced with a guy who wanted to avenge his defeat? How much was it emotional and did you overcome it with this fight? To be honest with you, um, you know, I tried to work hard every day in the gym to get back. You know, it didn't really affect me. It was more of how can I be better? And, and it was hard for me to, to be better, you know, when, when part of you still want to do something different. You know, but um, to be honest, in, in, when he hit me in my, in my cheek, I felt like he broke my cheek. So, you know, part of my mind was like, is this it for me? Is this it for me? I'm losing the fight. Should I keep going? But you know what? I put my heart into it. I said, you know what? I will never, ever quit. You've reconciled with your father. He was in the corner. There were times, it seemed, where he and Robert Garcia were giving you instructions at the same time. How does that work? It works because I can sense their, their, um, their difference in voices. That's the thing is when you've been working with, with somebody for a long time, excuse me, my father and, and Robert, you know wh whose voices comes which, and we, you know, they were pretty much almost the same. Next, quickly, one word, one name. Well, listen, you know what? I'm gonna go with your boy, how about that? Brigando? That's your boy, baby, you know that's what we want. Jim? Well, we can tell that Nonito Donaire watches HBO. He knows, and here in Corpus Christi, Texas, up next, our main event, you just saw, Nonito Donaire coming back with a ninth round TKO of Vic Darchinian on a fight in which the scorecards revealed Darchinian was leading and headed toward probable victory.